Good morning students. A very warm welcome to all of you for standard 9th. I hope you had a good time at home. I will be taking your social science. Today we will understand that how and what was the importance of social science and we will continue with chapter 1st. This year in social science we are having three units. First unit deals with 20th century the world and india it is related to historical events second unit deals with making of modern nation the era after which india developed as a modern nation and different changes that happened in the leadership and the constitution formation and other related parts of government formation third india its land and people this section deals with geography section it includes different types of land formations physiography 1 physiography 2 drainage system climate natural vegetation wildlife india human life and disaster management now we will study the first chapter of this year that is rise of british rule in india chapter 1 rise of british rule in india since ancient time India is a very prosperous country based on its cultural heritage, resource availability and education system. So because of that, so many European nations had been attracted towards India for economic prosperity, to trade with India and to gain knowledge of Indian education. There was a great demand of Indian goods like spices, muslin, silk, cloth, indigo in European markets and because of that European traders had a great trade with India and this trade was carried out by land route as well as the water route but it had to pass through a country Constantinople that is present Turkey. But in 1453, Turkish Muslims captured the city of Constantinople in Turkey and closed the trade route for Europeans towards Asia. And this made a requirement for European nations to find a sea route to India because they had great demand of Indian spices and other commodities. So there was a necessity for Europeans to find out a new sea route to India. Many European nations like Portuguese, Spain, French, all these people tried their luck to find out a new sea route to India. We have some examples where a Portuguese king, Henry, Prince Henry, was very ambitious and a brave person encouraged their sailors to find out a new sea route to India. One name that is Bartholomew Dice. He started his journey from Portuguese and through Atlantic Ocean traveled towards Africa, the southern tip of Africa. Here the place was termed as Cape Town but now there was so much storm in this region and because of that he could not move ahead but he had a hope that this place will give a hope to find out a new sea route to India and because of this hope only Bathlomadais gave the southern tip of Africa the name as Cape of Good Hope. Another country spain the king of spain gave christopher columbus encouragement and financial help to find out a new sea route to india but christopher columbus instead of going towards east moved towards west and find out a new land at that time he thought that this land was termed as india but as it was in the west side he termed or he named it as a West Indies. Later on, this particular country was named as America and 
This was recognized by an explorer named Amerigo Vespucci. So the name America is termed to tribute Amerigo Vespucci who originally found out this land as it was earlier discovered by Christopher Columbus. Now we will go through the map to understand how the sea route helped and how the land route was closed. Over here we could see that uh, from Calicut in India there was a sea route towards Iran, Iran to Bag Iraq, Baghdad, Baghdad to Turkey, Turkey to Constantinople. But now in 1453 where you can see C that is Constantinople. So this particular land was captured by Turkish people and because of that the trade route was closed and later on from Portuguese Bartholomew dies from Lisbon. Lisbon is the capital of Portuguese and from there he travelled towards the southern tip and found out a Cape of Good Hope because there was some hope for him to reach towards India and the way was through Atlantic Ocean. After that, in, 19, in 1498, another Portuguese sailor named as Vasco de Gama travelled towards west coast of India. The place was Calicut. He was successfully able to discover a new sea route to India by a way to, from Cape of Good Hope, from Lisbon to Cape of Good Hope and Cape of Good Hope to India. So... Vasco de Gama is termed as the explorer who found out the new sea route to India in 1498. And at that time, Calicut, the place in India, was ruled by King Zamorin. And King Zamorin gave Vasco de Gama the permission to trade with India. So this was the first time after fall of Constantinople that the European nation had started its trade again through a new sea route to India. Arrival of Europeans to India and establishment of trade centers by Britishers. As we know that Vasco de Gama first arrived in India in 1498 as he discovered a new sea route to India. Within span of 100 years, Portuguese took several countries under their control like Goa, Daman, Diu, Cochin, Malacca, etc. After Portuguese success, the Dutch people, that is the people from Holland, they tried their luck and started establishing trade with India. Later on, after Dutch people, it was the France country, means the people were termed as French. So they also tried to establish their trade relations again with India through a new sea route that was founded by Vasco de Gama. And in 16th century, British also tried their luck to establish trade and business with India as there was great demand of Indian goods in European markets. So this is how different European nations started trading with India by a new sea route discovered by Vasco de Gama. Queen Elizabeth gave permission to East India Company to carry out trade with Eastern countries. The first ship under the leadership of Captain William Hawkins arrived in Surat and at that time Surat was under the rule of Mughal Emperor Jahangir. Jahangir gave permission to Britishers or to the East India Company to trade with India. Here we can see the map of India where different European colonies were established to start up business with India. Different types of locations are denoted means the colonies that were established by Portuguese are with pink star that by the French colonies. The blue star indicates the colonies established by French 
colony by the French people and the blue dot are the colonies that were established by British people in India. So some of the prominent colonies established by Portuguese were Goa, Daman, Diu, Calicut, Kochi by French colony were established in regions like Mahe, Pondicherry and British East India Company were established at Fort Seri George, Surat, Mumbai and Fort Williams that is present day Calcutta. As we have seen in the map above that the first trade center established by British East India Company was in Surat. The year was 1613. Thereafter, they started their courtes or the trading centers in cities like Bharuj and Ahmedabad. But in the southern part, Marathas ruled over these regions and hence they could not withstand against the strong mighty power of Marathas and hence they started their trading centers in the south that is in state of Kerala and other parts like Calcutta that is Saint William, Saint George Chennai and Machilipatnam that is Andhra Pradesh and Mumbai became its headquarter in 1687. French people arrived in India for trade in 1668 and set up their trading centers in Mahe, Karaichal, Puducherry, Chandranagar, Machalipatnam. In 18th century, English and French were constantly busy with establishing their different trading centers throughout India. And there had been so many times war between French and English people. At the start of 18th centuries, French people and British people started establishing their power over more territories by capturing them. In South, Kingdom of Mysore was one of the strongest kingdom at that time. It was ruled by Tipu Sultan and his father Hyder Ali. Tipu Sultan was termed as the tiger by the British people because he was very strong and he was known for his valor and braveness. There had been three wars and these wars were termed as Mysore Wars. It fought in between 1746 to 1763 in which three wars were won by Tipu Sultan and the fourth war that was fought between British East India Company leaded by Robert Clive. In the fourth war, Tipu Sultan, because of the treachery of Robert Clive, was defeated. So this led British to rule over the biggest empire in the southern that was ruled by Tipu Sultan. So after three wars, British were finally successful to capture the Mysore and other nearby places to make a good control over the southern region of India. When British people came to India, West Bengal, that is currently West Bengal, the state of Bengal was ruled by Sirajuddaula. And Sirajuddaula had a great control over this region. But he denied the Britishers to start trade with India from St. Williams. And there had been so many opponents by Sirajuddaula that created enmity between Sirajuddaula and Britishers. Robert Clive was the Governor General of British East India Company at that time. So, Robert Clive, with the help 
of some of the people from Sirajuddola tried to conquer our the fort of Bengal. Let me explain you again. Sirajuddola used to rule our West Bengal and Britishers wanted to establish their trade centers in Bengal. For that reason, they started developing so many forts in parts of Bengal. But Sirajuddola did not want Britishers to trade with India and so he destroyed the forts of Britishers. This created enmity between Sirajuddola and the Britishers. British East India Company was led by Robert Clive. So Robert Clive wanted to establish trade center in Bangor. So he joined hands with some of the people from Sirajuddola and because of that he was able to convince commander in chief Mir Jafar and set Amit Chand to join with him and to defeat Sirajuddola. So, with the help of Mir Qasim, the commander in chief, and set Amit Chand, Robert Clive set up a plan and attacked the fort of Sirajuddola. And uh, Sirajuddola was defeated by Robert Clive in the Battle of Plassey on. 23rd June 1757 and thus Britishers laid its strong foundation in India with victory over Battle of Plassey. And as per the words given by Robert Clive, as Sirajuddola was dethroned and was killed in the Battle of Plassey, the new Nawab was Mir Qasim was made the new Nawab of Bengal and after winning Battle of Plassey there were 24 Parganas or 24 territories or 24 uh, kingdoms small kingdoms which were directly under the rule of Britishers or British East India Company so it was a great win of British East India Company after winning the Battle of Plassey in 1757. Another important battle that was fought between the British East India Company officials and Indian ruler was Battle of Baksa. So after dethroning Sirajuddola, Mir Jafar was made the Nawab of Bengal. British East India Company had set up great hands and great control over many territories of Bengal. For more greed, they stopped paying taxes to Mir Jafar. And because of that, Mir Jafar became enemy of British East India Company. So British East India Company dethroned Mir Jafar and made Mir Qasim as the Nawab of Bengal so that they can plunder more wealth and become more prosperous. Mir Qasim was very ambitious and because of that reason, Mir Qasim fought against British East India Company to get taxes from British East India Company. This was not liked by British East India Company and therefore they started a war with Mir Qasim. But Mir Qasim took shelter from Nawab of Oth, Awadh and Shah Alam, Mughal Emperor. So Nawab of Awadh, Mughal Emperor Shah Alam and Mir Qasim all combined their enemies and fought against the British East India Company at Baksar. But British East India Company were able to defeat 
all the three union that is Nawab of Awadh, Mughal Emperor Shah Alam and Mir Qasim the Nawab of Bengal and thus British got a control over three states namely the Bengal, Bihar and Orissa. The Battle of Baksar was fought on 22nd October 1764.